All right, today we're looking at the deep dive released by Sledgehammer Games going into MW3, talking about the perks and loadout systems. And we're gonna be breaking down basically what's gonna be meta for the CDL most likely going into next year. Uh, so let's get right into it. So going into MW3, Sledgehammer has kind of overhauled the create a class system, basically making perks its own different type of system using gear rather than just the perk element of the game. So what you're gonna have is, you know, gloves, boots, uh, gear, and vests that are basically have the abilities that perks would have previously. So basically the same thing as perks, but just labeled differently, just so it's attached to an equipment rather than using a perk itself. So that's the big major change. We'll go into a little deep dive into what each of them means and what we're gonna be probably seeing going into the CDL next year. So first when talking about vests, this is more of like a wild card aspect of the creative class system. You're basically going to see vests have different trade-offs to them. So one might have a specific element of the class but is going to remove another aspect of the class. So it has these like trade-offs here. So sometimes you'll see your lethals be taken out of the class or tactiles be taken out of the class or you know, it really has all these different trade-offs. So they're trying to balance it that way. In my opinion, what you're going to actually see in competitive, you know, infantry vest is going to be the main staple. Obviously, as you see here, you still keep your tactical, still keep your lethal and your field upgrade. And in this vest, you're getting increased tax sprint duration and reduced refresh time on that tax sprint. And it's pretty much going to be a staple just because of how important tax sprint and that movement is in Call of Duty nowadays. And the big thing to notice here is that duplicate effects do not stack. So this has the same effect as the running sneakers. So if you equip the running sneakers with this, you're actually just going to get uh, the lightweight boots. So you might as well just use the lightweight boots because you're just gonna be doing the same exact thing. Uh, there's no added benefit to it. And here they actually just make it easier for you so you don't actually have to waste that slot. It's going to automatically put that lightweight boots on for you. So if we're talking about the other vests, you know, engineer vest, it's gonna give you two tacticals rather than a lethal. You're gonna keep your field upgrade. And this is going to be the counter for equipment, just like you know in every other game where you have engineer, where you can see, you know, equipment through walls, similar to what you saw in Cold War. I, I guess there's a possibility of this being used, but I completely don't see it, just because of the importance of tax sprint and using that. I assume if people use this, it's going to be paired with DDoS, which I'll talk about later on in the video. Gunner vest is just overkill from the previous games. You're just gonna have your two primary weapons, similar Similar to previous games in the past, we're not going to be using this. It's going to get GA like it always has in competitive. Then you have demolition vests. Again, you're going to be GA. You always have these resupply lethal tacticals ones GA. So we're not going to be seeing that in competitive. Then we'll go over to CCT comms vest. This is going to be GA. Once again, this is a radar based ping equipment. So we're not going to be seeing it in competitive. And lastly, we have overkill vest, which is increased weapon swap speed and reload while sprinting. But the big thing here is that it's actually going to remove your field upgrade spot so if you're gonna be running dead silence if you're gonna be running trophy system you cannot use this because you're not gonna be able to get that field upgrade so in my opinion it's a weird trade-off because it doesn't really seem like it would be that beneficial to actually remove your field upgrade so I don't think we're gonna be seeing it it's going to be mostly this infantry vest going into the competitive play I will right, we'll move on to gloves now we're first gonna start out with the quick grip gloves uh, this is increased weapon spot speed I honestly don't see it there's gonna be better options for you ordinance gloves throw equipment further. So I think this is a possibility for something like Search and Destroy with nade spots. So this is uh, a possibility. I will put a question mark there. Commando gloves, reload while sprinting. I think we could possibly see it. Scavenger gloves, we're not gonna be seeing scavenger. Then we have marksman gloves, reduce sway and flinch while ADS. This is going to be uh, double check because I think this is going to be the main one that people are gonna use. Just sway and flinch while ADS. It's basically just gonna be toughness for you. So this is gonna be probably a staple for competitive. Then assault gloves gloves while jumping in accuracy time to ADS is improved. This is a possibility too. I think this is just going to be a lot better in terms of everything else. And now we'll move on to the boots. And this is going to be really important because there is a different varieties with the boots that you can be using based on how you want to play. So first off, lightweight boots, I can definitely see us using increased movement and swim speed, uh, especially if tack pads are G8. So this is a possibility. I'll give it a little check mark here. Climbing boots, increased climbing and mantling speed. We're not going to be seeing that. It's just not worth it. Running sneakers once again we're already going to be using infantry vests so we're not going to be using this tactical pads i think are going to be really important for the meta if it's not ga would increase slide distance and allows for aiming down sights while sliding increasing stance transition speeds and crouch movement speeds especially for how big slide canceling is going to be in this game and how big it is for this new age of cod this is going to be a staple uh, in my opinion it was kind of overpowered in the beta but if they can balance it right this is 100 what we're going to be seeing 
for SMG players. So big check mark for that one. Stalker boost, increased strafe and ADS movement speed. At first, I thought this was going to be something that like ARs would use, but in the beta and testing it out, it didn't really seem that strong. So it's a, I'll give it like a little check mark. I didn't really like it too much, but maybe if they increase the strafe speed, we'll see it a lot more. In my opinion, it just was not worth at the time. And then lastly, covert sneakers, 100%. We're going to be seeing these, especially in s &D. Everyone's going to be running it just because of sound EQ. But in respawn, you'll probably see ARs running this more just because you're not going to be seeing them uh, as quick and fast paced as those SMGs slide canceling everywhere. So you're probably going to have those players play a little bit more quiet so they're not being heard while they're trying to move. Most likely, we're going to be seeing those tactical pads used by those SMGs because they're going to be constantly putting that pressure on and getting in the gunfights. But for those ARs, you're probably going to see them use those covert sneakers just because you can still get sound horde in respawn. It's obviously a little bit tuned down from the previous games, uh, but you'll probably still be able to hear them decently, even with you know the possibility of sound EQ. So you're probably going to be using those if you are a slower AR type player. For gear, it's honestly going to be the same as MW2. It's probably not even worth going through all of these. It's either going to be TAC mask or EOD based on your preference. You know, if you're getting stunned or flashed a lot, you're going to be using TAC mask. If you don't want to get single nated, you'll use EOD. You know, obviously if you're like a bomb planner or someone who's really objective minded, you're going to be using EOD. So it's really based on your preference. And even at the pro play, it's going to be based on, you know, your preference and whatever the opponent team usually has a tendency of throwing more. If they're more of a tack based team, you'll probably have more players using tack mask. If they're more of a nade based team, you're gonna have more players using EOD. So based on your preference, whatever you guys wanna use, just one of those two. The other ones are just not worth it or just gonna be GA'd or banned uh, from the rule set anyways. So tack mask or EOD, pick your poison, whatever you guys wanna use. We'll move on to tacticals now. You know, you either see stuns or flashes usually, but stuns are just better in terms of limiting players' movement. So we usually use that. I guess you can use a flash if you wanted to, in my opinion. At least in last game, stuns were just more apparent. And obviously you saw that in pro play. It's possible we could see a smoke grenade again, but you know, in my eyes, it's probably going to work the same as MW2 if I had to guess. And it was one wayable in MW2. So unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to be using that. Battle Rage is going to be GA'd. You're not going to be using decoy or scatter. So stuns are basically going to be your tactical to use going into MW3. So we'll take a look at lethals now. And once again, it hasn't really changed from MW2. You're most likely going to see your staples either the frag grenade or semtech you know respawn most of the time especially if you're an smg you're going to be using that semtex it's a possibility if you like frags in respawn a lot of times teams are detonating uh different choke points so if you're an ar player or slower base player holding the hill maybe maybe you want to use a frag grenade it's a possibility some players do prefer it uh, but most of the time you're going to be using semtexes in respawn and then in search and destroy it kind of flips most of the time you see frag grenades just because you can cook them and with the timings of different strats uh, you can actually to use them to more of a benefit than Semtex is, but you do see sometimes, you know, one or two players on a team run a Semtex. It's all personal preference, but in my opinion, if I were you, just stick to the Semtex in respawn and stick to the frag grenades in search and destroy, similar to last game. So we'll move on to the actual field upgrades, and this is going to really personalize your class based on your role, because in my opinion, uh, you're gonna have those ARs most likely use the trophy system. It's just gonna be the main staple, especially for those slower ARs, either sitting in a hill or holding down a lane. You can just pop your trophy close to you so you don't get naded out or tacked out. So really important, use the trophies most likely for those ARs. And then for the SMGs, we're probably going to see dead silence once again, just because of the movement speed. And if you're not actually using those covert sneakers, you're going to have those timings with the dead silence. So you're still gonna have half and half basically. So you know, you're not gonna have those covert sneakers to constantly make plays, but you're gonna be able to use that dead silence when you have those timings and you can save them for those specific routes that you might take as an SMG, whether you're trying to rotate early or whatever you're trying to do to make a play. So you're going to be using those dead silence for sure if you're an SMG, trophy system, ARs. And I actually really just want to talk about these two specific field upgrades right here, DDoS and ACS. So ACS is some type of new equipment that we're going to be seeing in MW3 where you can actually, you know, place this on the point and it actually slowly captures it for you. I really want to see what this is like. In my opinion, it might just get instantly banned or GA because it's acting as that like you know fifth person for your team where they're just holding the hill but I kind of want to see how it would really play out you know whether you're just trying to like hold the hill but not actually be inside of it where you can actually just hold those other lanes as a full team and you can just let that ACS sit in the hill for you or sit on that control point and start capping for you while everyone starts pushing up trying to get more kills I think it's a really 
interesting opportunity. I'm not sure if it'll get allowed in competitive, but I just wanted to throw that out there and just say it is an interesting uh, concept and it's a cool idea, even if we don't use it. And then going on to DDoS, if we read the description here, activates a device that deactivates electronics and disrupts enemy sensors in the media area for a short time. So kind of like an EMP, but I'm assuming in the form of like a black hat, if you remember that from Black Ops 2, where you like hold out their, your phone and it actually deactivates whatever equipment or you know whatever area that you want. So that's an interesting concept as well, especially if you pair that with engineer, you know, you have someone that might be trying to kill trophies uh, as a role themselves. I'm not sure if we will see it but i think it is an opportunity once again for something that could possibly be used and it's a really interesting concept because it's like an emp grenade but it's more of equipment uh, and you have to use it at the right time so i think that's a really interesting concept too and it's a possibility but honestly everything else we're not going to be seeing in competitive in my opinion but those are some really cool ideas for field upgrades and then lastly i'll talk about kill streaks so once again we have the same type of kill streaks uh, we have our cruise missile we have our mortar strike and sae i believe mortar strike was actually six kills before an mw2 so this is a possibility i think where we can continue to use our cruise missile and depending how the more strike is we can use that as a second streak or if sae is still a possibility and it's not bugged anymore we could technically see that too so we have our six streak and then we have our two seven streaks uh probably whichever is going to be more impactful you're going to be seeing either one of those especially if we want to go back to having two different types of streaks you know last year once the sae was ga'd uh because it was bugged we definitely really saw another streak come in it was basically just cruise missiles so let's see if we actually get a second kill streak here obviously it's probably going to be one of these two just because it's one more kill than the cruise missile so you get your cruise and then you get that second streak similar to like all the other previous games where you do have those multiple streaks uh, so i do see us using either one of those whichever is probably better uh, probably the sae if it is fixed so that's going to do it for my initial thoughts going into the mw3 loadout meta you know we're obviously going to see the different weapons and stuff and see how they're being used once the game drops but this is going to give you a really good idea on what type of perks or lethals or tacticals or field upgrades or even score streaks to use going into the scene because whatever we use in competitive and going into those first few cdl matches is going to be used in that rank play once it drops uh, later in probably january so thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you guys for making it to the end of the video and i'll see you guys in the next one